Alrighty, folks. Welcome to the brewery. I'm having a bit of a chat today about one of the methods or one of the things I want to implement into some trials and some experiments as part of this kit twang, yeah, the, the whole process of what I'm going through. I've talked in previous videos about some of the brewers that have given me information and things I want to look at and play with. This is one of them. I've, I've received beers in the last few days. Uh, it's now Wednesday morning. I received beers late last week from two different brewers who are using two different methods, two different things to improve their beer. Uh, they're both very happy with, with the results they're getting from that. I've asked them if they'd like to send me some beers for me to try uh, and have a look at and see if they're methods I'd like to play around with. And they've both done so. This, and this is one of them. Now, this beer, I'm hoping, is going to be okay. Uh, this beer was sent to me by Michael Holding. He sent me two bottles. I drank one yesterday. Uh, I did do a video on this subject. It got a little bit long-winded, so I'm sitting down today and trying to have a bit of crack at it. Uh, problem being, he sent two bottles. This bottle leaked. Uh, it was sealed and seemed to be okay, but it did leak, uh, and we've lost that much out of the bottle in the delivery process. Um, so I'm hoping it has not been affected too much. It's clearly lacking in carbonation, um, which is which is going to do, which is actually a shame because this was quite a nice looking. Well, it still is. The whole point, part of the point of this, um, is there's some pretty wicked clarity on Michael's beers, and um, you can see there. Um, yeah, so I'm glad I didn't use this one as a <laughs> as a test. Looking all right now. Now I don't know how much that's going to show up there, but that is a very clear. <laughs> <laughs> a lovely clear beer. But, but I want to talk about the, the process. Now, Michael's been spruiking a book by Max Barrington called Beers from the Pub um, Served at Home. It's an e-book. It's a relatively small book. I think it's about 52 pages all up. I downloaded it over the weekend and had a look through it. Uh, and it it details the journey of a home brewer going from the idea of that his beer was costing him too much, he wanted to make it at home, um, but he wanted to make it of a decent quality similar to what he's making in the pub. Uh, so over an 18, I think it was about an 18-month period, he's gone through the process of, you know, adjusting and changing his brew kit-based. Uh, and the book documents the process, how he got to where he was going to um, and, it, it, and it lists in great detail um, the equipment he uses um, and like how he goes from the start to the finish of each brew uh, resulting in as I said I'm, I'm <laughs> yesterday's beer uh, was beautiful had a lovely head um, and I commented on a I did a video for him uh, about the whole thing one of the most stunning looking homebrew beers I've ever seen. Uh, you certainly can't question that he's getting a really nice clear beer. Um, I will put a link down the bottom to the book. Uh, you do need to have a you know some sort of Kindle app to read it. Um, I know plenty of people do these days. Uh, it's five, I think it's five ninety nine, six dollars for the second edition of the book which is the link I'll put which has actually got the pictures which makes it a bit easier because some some of the equipment that he uses is a little um, well it's not particularly overly detailed but without the pictures it's gonna it can be a little bit 
uh, confusing as plenty of home brewing stuff is if you can't really look at it. So I certainly recommend if you're interested in looking at ways of yeah, in, improving your beer, um, getting a really nice looking beer, uh, it's worth looking at. But the biggest thing I've taken from that video and looking to go forward for me as part of the whole improving the kit beer and improving, well, and potentially just improving beer in general, uh, is that at one point he got, he'd gone through the process of getting all the things in place that he thought should have done. Yeah, that were needed to get good beer, but he was still not getting great beer. And he had one batch where he had three kegs, and it's all explained in the book, but basically he brewed three kegs um, per batch. Uh, and he drank the kegs, and each keg tasted different. Uh, and they had an unpleasant, I think he referred to it as a, as a bitter flavour. Um, he was confident that he got rid of the home brew type flavour, um, but this bitter flavour was hanging around. Um, so obviously he put it down to his keg, so he's looking at how he was going about cleaning them. He'd been cleaning them with nappy sand, um, as a lot of brewers do, you know, uh, use nappy sand as a cheap option um, to get sodium percarbonate as opposed to using straight sodium percarbonate. So he went to his, he went to his local, you know, chemical cleaning place. Uh, and chat a chat to them about what he was looking, what he was trying to do, and they recommended a product which was a glass cleaner. Um, I think it was called um, Eco Clean GW12, top of my head. Uh, and he used that then to clean his kegs and to clean his fermenters before his next batch. Next beer came out, didn't have those nasty flavours that he'd had previously. Uh, so, that for me was interesting. Whether it's, I said, the beer itself, um, it's, a, it's a basic, it's a, it's a kit beer with dextrose and maltodextrin. It's fairly basic, it sits around four, yeah, I think this batch was about 4.2% ABV. Um, it's just, very standard pub lager type beer um, and he was very happy with that outcome he was getting it was, it was close as close to the um, the beer is getting in the pub um, that he was very that he was happy with what he got hence why he's actually yeah he's written this book and he's contacted me I like contacted him initially but yeah he was happy to send the beers down and and, and stuff like that. But for me, the, the question was, okay, I've always used sodium percarbonate for cleaning, um, ranging between pure sodium percarbonate and, you know, laundry soaker. Um, so, and I've always rinsed it, you know, reasonably well. But it got me thinking, okay, is it possible that sodium percarbonate is having an adverse effect on our beers. Now, this beer has some twang in it. Not a lot, but it does have twang. So, this process has gone, hasn't particularly gotten rid of twang, but I said what stood out for me was the fact that it had made a considerable improvement to his beer making that change. Now, I don't know whether he was using real nappy sand and it had perfumes or other stuff in it and that was the effect or whether it was pure, whether it was not rinsing thoroughly or not, I really don't know. Um, but that going to the, the glass cleaner instead and getting that big improvement says to me, okay, it's something worth looking at. Because I said, if that is, if that is creating lower quality beers, then it's something that certainly needs to be incorporated. As this is what little John is. All these little things have got to add up together to put into the process to make the better beer. So, while I, I don't believe it's going to get rid of the twang, it may have a good impact on all my beers. So, I've gone out 
this morning and bought myself a big bottle of glass washer. Now obviously it's not a different one. If he was up in he's up in North Queensland, so he's getting something a bit more local. This is what uh, our local cleaning supplies got. I know Matty Ursack, the hop wizard, uses this stuff on his glasses. Uh, I don't know whether he uses it for cleaner thing, he just uses it for his glasses. Um, I've only ever just used the dishwasher. But I thought, effort, let's do it. So I'm going to grab this. Five litres, cost me 30, about 35 bucks. Uh, it'll last quite a while. So this is something I'm going to try. I'm going, to, I'm going to do a batch, I'm going to clean the kegs and the fermenters that are all associated with that batch with this gear and see if it makes any difference. Obviously we'll have to do a split batch where half is done <laughs> with the sodium percarbonate and half is done with this. Um, but it just may be... Yeah? Um, a miracle discovery. So I said, I've never seen... I've certainly not ever seen anyone question particularly whether sodium percarbonate is having, a, having like I said, an adverse effect, if it's having negative effect on the beer. Uh, I've seen plenty of people who were worried about people using nappy sand due to the fillers and whatnot and how difficult it can be to remove it. Um, but I've never seen anyone just outright say, you know, that by using it, you're gonna, you can actually make you, it can, you know, be bad for your beer. So I'm gonna try it and find out. Worst case scenario, I got myself some decent glass, some proper glass cleaner, um, and I'm gonna play around with this as well in another video and see what that does. Because I have done the videos in the past, you know, where I've advocated for using, yeah, you know, the household dishwasher for cleaning. Uh, and doing your beer glasses, which is fine and has been at this point. Um, but right about now, now that I've got the grandkids and stuff living here, my dishwasher's gone from a relatively, um, relatively clean amount of stuff actually going in the dishwasher to it's just full of crap. So the, I don't think right now, as it, is, as it stands, my beer glasses are getting as clean as they, they're certainly not getting as clean as they were. So this is something I've implemented. I've got myself. The little, the little uh, glass washer thing. Um, yeah, it's not bloody. Again, not the focus of the video, but you know, this little fella with the brush and stuff in there. Uh, so I'm going to give these things a run on some upcoming videos. So keep an keep an eye out for those. Anyway, guys. I said, nothing really going on. I'm not going to drink that beer. I said, I did drink it yesterday. I drank, I knocked over at the, at the uh, 750ml long neck uh, without too much trouble. Um, thumbs up to Michael Holding. Um, the book is, I said, by Max Barrington. Um, oh, what's the bloody called again? Beers from the pub served at home. I said, I'll stick a link down the bottom um, to where you can download it. That will also have access to, you know, where you can download a Kindle. The Kindle app as well, if you need it. Um, yeah, but yeah, like I said, have a look at, have a look at the, have a look at the book. Six bucks. He's definitely getting some, yeah, good results. I said, this is, despite the fact it did have some kit twang in it for the basic beer that it is, um, it's certainly up there with some of the uh, better home brews, kit based home brews I've had. So it's worth looking at. Um, big shout out to all the patrons of the channel. Uh, special shout out to Michael Brownlee who's the latest patron. He's been in for a while. I've missed um, giving him a shout out. But anyway, Michael thanks for joining us. If you're interested in Patreon, and Patreon's what keeps the channel going, let's me play around and do all these experiments. Let's me get this sort of stuff. It wouldn't be happening. Uh, links down the bottom. If you subscribe, thank you. If you aren't, hit the subscribe button, ring the bell. Don't miss any videos that way. Um, and if you like what's going on, give me the old thumbs up. But anyway, for now, I'm done. So, till I see you on the next video when we uh, yeah, we, we brew beer, we drink beer, we talk beer. Till then, good brewing.